So, hi everyone. It's great to be here in person at KubeCon. And thanks for sticking around with us. Like, I know it's late on a Friday and everyone just wants to go. But we're here to talk to you about multi-cloud workload identity with Spiffy. Uh, I'm Jake. I'm one of the Cert Manager maintainers I'm interested in all things identity and X509. And hey, I'm Charlie. I work on the enterprise side of Jetstack products. And I'm also interested in all things authentication and authorization. We're both senior software engineers uh, working at Jetstack and Jetstack product, and are both interested in Spiffy. Uh, we think Spiffy is really great, and we're interested in trying to encourage more adoption in the, in the technology. And that's why we're doing this talk. Um, during a company hackathon at the end of last year, we worked on a project um, that allowed um, was based on using Spiffy IDs uh, to improve the developer experience for cross-cloud identities or use of cross-cloud APIs for cross-cloud workloads. Um, and the work that we're presenting today is based on that. So we're going to have a presentation where we're going to explain about how we think about workload identity and what that means for us. And then we're going to have um, a short uh, and explain what we've built and have a short demo of that. Um, and you'll also be able to get We'll also share a link to our code at the end if you're interested in having a look yourselves. It's a proof of concept, but the code will be there. So what do we think about workload identity? What, what is a workload identity? So an identity is a way for a workload to prove who it is, prove its authenticity to other workloads and other anything that it may be communicating with. So, we believe that a workload, workload should be issued this identity just by existing, just by running in a cluster, just by running anywhere. It's not something that it should, it shouldn't have to have anything that it knows, um, anything that it, uh, any secret that uh, should be given beforehand. It's something that it should get just by existing, by running in some environment. So contrasting this to what we often see people doing uh, with, with even with Kubernetes workloads, is they're putting secrets in their, in their deployments, they're including secret tokens to talk to other services. Like, we, we believe that those aren't identities, and an identity is a different thing. An identity is something that you have just by existing. So, um, yeah, and the, the problem, of course, you, you, many of you will be aware of, you know, if you're trying to get secret tokens into many thousands, millions of pods, many different tenants and many different clusters, this very quickly becomes very challenging to manage at scale. We also believe that the best way to represent workload identity that we have um, is with an unforgeable document, and we, we view that a good solution to that as being an X509 certificate. Um, an unforgeable document is a document that represents your identity that can't be used by somebody else. Uh, it still proves who I am, uh, who, what, my, what workload I am, but it's not a document that can be stolen by a malicious workload and replayed to somebody else. Uh, and that's why X509 is, is good, because it's part of the communication is part of a challenge, and I need to have the private key that is accompanied with that certificate to prove what that workload is, who that workload is. Um, and we also believe that workloads shouldn't need to have or do anything to get their identity. So we talked about how we don't want workloads to have a secret in order to go and work out who they are or to have to call someone. We don't want them to have to do anything. They should find their identity available to them or their identity is available to them without them even needing to know where it is. So what, what do we have at the moment? You're running, in, in, for example, in a, in a single cloud provider. What do you have available to you in a Kubernetes environment that looks like this, that looks like workload identity? So many of you will be running in GKE and EKS clusters, AKS clusters, managed Kubernetes offerings. These have all got something that looks a bit like what I've just described, the workload identity I've definition that we've just described. Um, it's possible for a workload which is running in one of these clusters to get an identity without needing to know anything, without needing to request anything. Um, and it can use that identity to call um, APIs in, in that cloud very easily. And we see this as uh, this, 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 this part of the problem is, is or this, in this case, is solved. Uh, what's good about these identities is that they're easily consumed by cloud SDKs. If you're 
talking to a Google Cloud storage bucket, the Google Cloud SDK is able to make use of that workload identity. Um, and the workload doesn't need to know that it's using the workload identity. It, it could be using a service account, but uh, the SDK works that out for the developer. And the developer experience is quite good. Yeah. Developers also don't need to worry about, because of that, developers don't need to worry about how they're going to get um, a key into their or a service account key or some AWS credentials into their workload so that they can talk to the things they need to talk to. So, um, yeah, they, so they don't need to do anything extra there. The other thing that's nice about the, these identities um, is that they're automatically rotated. Uh, so there's no hassle when you want to go and uh, you don't need to, when a key is exposed for some reason, maybe somebody commits it to a GitHub repo or something, they don't need to go around and update all the deployment scripts and you don't have developers managing these secrets at all. But we see a, a problem with these identities or with, with that, is we don't see that as sufficient to solving this workload identity problem of making, uh, or with this goal of trying to make sure that all workloads have an identity. Um, these identities are proprietary and they are most useful and most easily used in your, the cloud that the workload is resident in. Uh, it's easy for me to use my GKE workload identity to talk to Google APIs, but although it is available, Identity Federation is still another thing to configure that needs to be configured such that you can call APIs on other clouds. And you also can't use this identity everywhere. Like you, you can't use this identity to talk natively to a Postgres database because Postgres uses a different uh, user and password and different way of authenticating callers. Um, so it's, the identity is, is one of many identities and it's not universally accepted. Yeah. And so what this, what's frustrating about this is even though we've got something that looks like workload identity, um, and we even call it workload identity, it, we're still back to that same problem of a workload having many identities and managing many identities. So we, we see that, and, and then we're back to creating additional secrets and credentials outside so that we can talk to other services that we need to talk to, talk to that database or talk to that random thing that's still left on-prem. Uh, and that's a security issue where developers are managing these secrets in their deployment pipelines in different ways, uh, in, potentially insecurely, and in a large environment, large multi-tenant environment, it's really hard to keep track of it. Uh, credentials are left around, they, uh, and so on. They're not revoked when they're no longer used. Of course, the other thing about those extra, those extra credentials which have been managed is that they're not cryptographically identifying the, the workload anymore. They're just as we see it, just another password uh, that, that could be, if the misconfiguration were to happen, another work picked up by another workload and used, um, such that that identity is actually available to anybody who has the secret. And we see that as a, as a big problem. So what we would really like to see is that there was a, a production-ready standard for workload identity where workloads could have a single identity to talk to everything they needed to talk to, regardless of where that was. Um, whether it was a cloud provider or another open source tool or another workload that was, um, had been a custom workload in your organization. Um, it, it should be using the same identity and we'd love for, that, that, for there to be a standard. So I'm now going to pass over to Jake to talk a bit about what, what, what we'd like, how we'd like this to look uh, and what we've done in, in this area. Great, thanks. So you've probably heard about Spiffy by now because it's been mentioned a few times in this track. Uh, it stands for Secure Production Identity Framework for Everyone. And we first got exposed to it like four years ago in, I think, in KubeCon Seattle. And we thought it was just a really good idea. And it's the foundation from cloud agnostic kind of identity control plane. It's a open specification and reference implementation in Spire to authenticate securely between services over untrusted networks without using passwords or API tokens. So if you think back to our first slide, I think that's the first thing that we said. Then the Spiffy spec defines a Spiffy ID and the Spiffy verifiable identity document. So these are standardized identity. A Spiffy ID is, looks a little bit like a URL. You can see one underneath, consisting of the trust domain and then a any identity can go in the various path components. It's, it's human readable, and it identifies a person or a service. 
Um, the SVID, or the Spiffy Verifiable Identity Document, it's a specially crafted X509 certificate. So it has a very specific format. Um, but more importantly, you can use it to cryptographically identify the bearer of the holder. And this, again, this is what we believe is the unforgeable document that should represent our identity. And finally, if you're using your SVID or SVID to perform a TLS handshake, mutual TLS, it means that both entities on each side of the connection should be reasonably sure that the identity on the other side is who they say they are. So yeah, it's unforgeable. It's CNCF incubating project and open source. So since 2020, Spiffy has been incubating. It's a collaborative effort based on like many, many engineering years of effort inside how kind of big companies that you've heard of have integrated their service identities. So we can take all that knowledge in the CNCF and we are happy that it won't become proprietary at any point. So happy to drive adoption of it. And I think we're not alone in this. Lots of people are starting to think about using it. It's getting, getting traction at these talks, at least. And we've seen a few customers at Jetstack talk about it as well. So how do we take uh, SVIDs and make them cloud native? So I'll, as a maintainer of the Cert Manager project, I'll just tell, tell, tell you about that too. So Cert Manager is a CNCF sandbox project. It's dedicated to all kind of cloud native X509 certificate management, but it's a kind of umbrella organization that encompassing several projects. And I'm kind of lucky enough that I spend a good time, a good amount of my work time being uh, allowed to contribute to it. And the first component we need is Cert Manager itself. It's a kind of very popular Kubernetes operator. Most people are already using it, even if they don't know they are. And we can issue X509 certificates from almost any CA. So the project started at Jetstack, where we work. And it was originally, originally designed for easily getting public ACME or Let's Encrypt certificates for your ingresses. But we kind of support all kind of internal CAs. But, and if we don't support it yet, you can easily write an integration. So you can easily issue X509 certificates from your internal PKI. And the idea of set manager is that we'll automatically, we'll automatically issue and rotate short-lived certificates for you. You don't need to worry about them. And it's a CNCF project. It entered the sandbox in November 2020, and we're going for incubation right now. So hopefully before the next KubeCon, we'll be incubated. So we've got set manager, and now we need SVIDs. So we need our workload identity. So we have something called CSI Driver Spiffy. This is kind of officially in the Spiffy project now. If you scroll down on spiffy.io, you'll see it. Um, we said earlier that workloads should not have to do or know anything to get their identity. So if you've been in any Spire talks, they call this like solving the zero turtle. You don't need, you don't need to trust something. You just need to get your identity from somewhere. Um, so a CSI driver is a way of exposing a file system to a pod. And so it's part of the volume setup of your pod. It, it will happen before your workload starts. And the kubelet tells you your identity as part of starting a pod, because by deploying something on Kubernetes, you've explicitly told the kubelet, I want you to start this pod. And so we're a kind of pre-pod startup. Um, we generate a, the, we get the CSI driver called, we generate an in-memory private key, we generate a CSR from this, and we submit that to Cert Manager. So the, the important thing here is that the private, we get an SVID signed from Cert Manager, and the private key never leaves the workload. Yeah, we can also put in kind of approval and attestation steps at this point. Like we have, a, we have something called approval policy, which might integrate with what you're already using for your kind of compliance. But you could insert policy at this point. And then, yeah, your identity is available in the pod before the workload starts. And the final part of uh, kind of any mutual TLS is you need the trust bundles for your trust domain. So we have a third project in this demo called Trust. We don't actually know if it will keep that name because it's a bit generic. But it's kind of a trust route distribution management. 
So how do you verify that the SBID that is coming to you, Mutual TLS, is valid? Um, well, a trust domain is basically a bundle of CA certificates, and we'll just distribute them to workloads based on the correct context, right? Which workload should trust which trust domains? So we combine all of these. Um, so all of our workloads will have a SBID available before they start. So at the beginning, we, we had a third point, which was workloads should not have to know or do anything to get their identity. So how are we going to solve that? So we're kind of, we like Spiffy a lot, and we're trying to drive adoption. But if you look out in the ecosystem right now, most, mostly the, mo the most users of Swift IDs are just using it to configure MTLS between Envoy instances, which is great for the service meshes that are already using Envoy. They can adopt Spiffy IDs, and all of your service mesh traffic will be completely encrypted and validated. Like This works with Istio and Console Connect and Kuma and all of the other projects that are on Spiffy.io. But while they're using Spiffy, it doesn't increase adoption of the SVID because it's an opaque implementation detail. Like by default, your, you talk unencrypted connections to your Envoy sidecar. Envoy does the encryption and verifying of the other end, which is another Envoy, which decrypts it and then just passes it to you without any context. So you can't use the Spiffy flavored MTLS directly, and you can't verify who's calling to you. This is, uh, this is sad, so we want to increase adoption of Spiffy, and the only way to do that is to make it easy to use. And we want to get to the point where everything will use SVIS natively. So for our kind of mini demo, we proof of concept, we set out to recreate the state-of-the-art cloud provider experience that Charlie talked about, where you just call APIs and they know who you are. But we want to use a standard identity document on different services, like our Spiffy ID. But the developer experience has to stay the same. It has to be seamless to use. So they should just continue writing the same code they've always written and call their cloud services, and it just works. So we're, we're going to show you a live demo. I hope it works. And I'll just quickly show you what it looks like before we do it. So say you've got your app, and you're talking to your cloud provider, and it's just working. Um, we have built a connector called Spiffy Connector. It's very unimaginative, which can verify an incoming uh, SVID and swap it for very, very short-lived temporary cloud credentials. So you still have them, but they're very, very short-lived, so you hopefully can't be stolen from um, We have a sidecar in the pod uh, that is talking to this server over uh, gRPC, and this gRPC is using the GoSpiffy library to authenticate and validate the incoming SVIDs. Um, we can actually get our SVID from anywhere because we support Spire as well, in case you already have it. But we like our, uh, we like our CSI driver, so we're using that in this demo. The sidecar will automatically pick up the SVID. It will talk to the Spiffy Connector server and exchange it for very short-lived cloud credentials and write it in the kind of well-known location that the cloud SDKs are already expecting credentials to be. And, we, and then you just call the cloud APIs, and it works. And we know that you can do this kind of already with Kubernetes Service Account Identity Federation. But this, can, this kind of idea is that we're using a standardized identity. It doesn't have to be on Kubernetes. Like a lot of people try and struggling with workload identities are like, how do we get from our on-prem and hybrid environments to clouds? And this is how it would work. Um, yeah, we just believe it's more secure as well because your single identity document is this signed X509 certificate. And if it's being minted from your internal CA, you can check the audit logs of your CA. You know exactly how many identities have been issued and who should be using them. So it's time for the live demo. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see if I can get this to show up. So there's a 
big lag, so <laughs> bear with me. And I'm also going to have to zoom this in a bit, I think. Ooh, apologies, lag. Okay. Now if I do, I should have done this before, but we're doing it now. It's a live demo. Do you think people can read that? A bit more? more? Yeah. Okay, is that good enough? Yeah. Okay, cool. So um, on my laptop, I've got uh, our, our demo running in a kind cluster. Uh, we're, we're running those two green components you just saw on the, on the diagram. Uh, we've got this, this Biffy connector server, which is issuing the short-lived credentials, and uh, we've got an example workload. And we're gonna first look at how these two are deployed, um, and then look at the things running on the cluster. So let's first look at the Spiffy Connector server deployment. So um, the Spiffy Connector server is, is just a deployment. It's a single, um, single replica, but it's importantly is configured uh, with an ACL or a list of ACLs. So here we can see that our example, what we're calling match principle, matches uh, the Spiffy ID of our example application. So you can see that um, that uh, application or workload is able to get certain sets of credentials. So uh, first, it's able. The first type of credential it's able to get is a Google IAM service account key from the Google IAM service account key provider, um, with an object reference uh, to this service account uh, that's running in my personal GCP project. Uh, it's also able to get um, an AWS credential for by assuming this role. Uh, from, from a different provider, from an AWS STS Assume role provider. Um, the, the server is also configured with its own um, SVID, so the server knows how to find its SVID by looking somewhere, at looking at a, a, a mounted um, set of files. So that's also set in the, in the server's configuration. And that's so that the workload knows to trust the server, and we'll see that in just a second. Uh, the deployment itself is, is fairly, fairly simple. Um, it's, it's just a Spiffy Connector server. We, we make use of this config file I've just talked you through. Um, the other thing that uh, the server does have is the server has, does have some credentials such that it is able to go and mint those short-term credentials. So we've moved that away from the, the, the long-lived cloud credentials away from the developer workloads into the Spiffy Connector server in our example. Um, and, and so that's what, what you're also seeing here. Um, as you can, again, as you can see, the, the Spiffy ID is also included as a volume mount. Um, and this, uh, the, the Spiffy ID is made available to the server um, using the CSI Spiffy integration that we have with Cert Manager. Um, so that's how, that's, um, that's how both the server and the workload are getting their Spiffy IDs. And these volumes are as you would expect for the cloud provider credentials. So now I'm going to show you the example app, which has a sidecar running um, next to it. Um, and we're going to have a look at what that configuration looks like too. So uh, the application that we're running uh, is, an ex is a simple application which is m going to move files from one cloud to another. Uh, you might imagine some in a mul other more complicated multi-cloud workload example, but uh, that's what it's doing in our case. That's what the, imagine that there's some use case that we want to move files periodically or whatever between two, two different clouds. Um, so the configuration that the developers have written is here. Um, they are exposing a service where people are instructing the application on a given port, and they are talking between two different um, buckets in the cloud provider. Uh, and these are configured here. These are the two bucket names. Um, and it's also configured as a simple deployment. Uh, in, in this deployment, we have two containers. Uh, we have the example application, uh, which runs uh, and, and ser serves the application. Um, and it has some, some volume mounts to, to share the, which are shared with the sidecar, uh, which it uses to access the short-lived credentials which are collected by the sidecar. Um, and just before you're wondering, like, oh, hey, look, uh, you know, you said you were going to make the developer experience better. Like, this looks like something that the developer would need to configure themselves. Like, you could perhaps imagine if you were to use something like this, that a mutating webhook would inject configuration or sidecars, as you are familiar with for other tools. So, um, 
it's included here to help you understand what's going on. Like, the mutating webhook would be rather magic, and I felt that it was clearer just to show what it would look like. So alongside the workload is this spiffy connector sidecar. And the spiffy connector sidecar is configured. Um, it expects to find a spiffy connector server at a particular place in the cluster um, at, th at this address. Um, it also expects the spiffy connector server to present a particular spiffy ID back. Uh, it, it should have this ID back, and otherwise it won't, it won't talk to it. Um, and it's also configured where to find its own spiffy ID, and that spiffy ID, that it, or its own SVID, and that SVID is presented to the server to identify itself. Um, and I've just had a pop-up on my other screen. <laughs> I'm just going to press skip deployment. Um, and so yes, and as, as you can see, it also has these same shared volume mounts. So the, the spiffy connector sidecar is able to write the short-lived credentials into the volume mounts, and then those are made available in the workload um, container as well. So that the SDKs in the workload are able to call those cloud APIs um, transparently without needing to know where those, how they are being authenticated to talk to them. So, I'm going to have a look at the, um, the infrastructure, if you like, for this that's running in the Cert Manager namespace. Um, Cert Manager itself, uh, along with the Cert Manager CSI driver Spiffy um, and the Cert Manager Trust Project are all running in the Cert Manager namespace to make all of this possible. Um, so as you can see, we've got the Cert Manager components and things here. Um, that, that this is allowing all of this to happen and allowing things like that, that volume configuration that we saw in both the server and the example application to work. So when that volume configuration is there, the, the SVID is automatically made available. Now we're going to have a look um, at the pods in the Spiffy Connector um, server namespace. So we've got one Spiffy Connector server running. Uh, we can have a look at the uh, logs for the Spiffy Connector server to see what it's been up to. Uh, it's loaded its configuration. It's also supposed to show that it's issued to. It's also supposed to show that it's issued some credentials to our to our workload. Um, now we're going to have a look at the example workload. Hopefully, its logs are more interesting. Um, we're hoping that here that we'll see that it's requested and got Google and AWS credentials. Uh, it says that it's starting a credential manager for this particular workload and that it's got both a, a Google Cloud and an AWS credentials and that they've been saved in the respective paths. So that's the end of the terminal demo. I just want to, as, a, as proof of concept, I want to show you this application actually doing something. Um, I'm going to try and, I seem to have, sorry, I'm back in kind of lag mode over here. Let me just get this out of full screen and try and recover my window that I thought I was moving over. Uh, here it is. Um, I'll do my best. Hopefully, that it's, it's a pretty complicated interface, so if you can't, <laughs> can't quite work out what's going on, um, do let me know. So the workload is, is a very simple server that moves files from one cloud to another, and you can hopefully work out where these different files are. At the moment, they're in AWS S3. Um, I've got the S3 management console open here, and if the conference Wi-Fi works, then I'll be able to show you that it is actually here by clicking this button. So you can see that the file is still sitting there in S3. And in my other tab here, I've got a GCP bucket with no objects in it. Um, and I'll prove to you that there are no objects in it by clicking the refresh button again. Um, nothing has shown up. So, and now if I go back to our example workload and I click move files, it should move the object from one cloud to the other. Um, and that's uh, all uh, the credentials that allowed that operation to take place were all made possible by the Spiffy ID and the SVID that that um, workload had. So hopefully we've proved that it's a live demo. <laughs> we've proved that it can work in some way. Um, I'm going to switch back to try and find my Chrome window for the presentation. And if I go back up here and 
go present a view. I hope it will just continue. Oh, no, that's not what we want. <laughs> um, We're very prepared. It's OK. <laughs> yeah, well, let's, let's try and let's try and do this. Exit full screen. And let's do bring this. I'm going to bring this back over here. Just to tell it what to do. Let's do a present view. We've actually only got one more slide, so this is quite a lot of work for that one <laughs> final slide. But um, it, was, it was quicker in my head. Um, there you go. Um, and now back here, let's just make this window the right size as well. And we can go to the next slide. Yeah, great. So hopefully what we have shown with this proof of concept is an example use case where Spiffy IDs are used as first class citizens. Um, we, we appreciate that you may have other ways of solving this problem that, that aren't as awful as we told you they might be. But what we really wanted to show here was that Spiffy IDs can be useful and you can use them and they can form like valid paths and channels of communications between workloads. Um, so. It, it's been and it's been really interesting too. We've had we, Jake and myself uh, and my colleagues at Jetstack have been uh, staffing the Cert Manager booth this week, and we've had lots of people coming to us and talking about these fantastically complicated systems they have for getting certificates for different host names into different workloads and different clusters because they all meant to have the same identity and then they're, but they're all running in all these different places and it's kind of like oh well you know have you thought about using a different kind of identity have you thought about using spiffy and so it's actually really validated and, and other discussions we've had this week have really validated you know that people are looking for some kind of standard here um, so yeah we've got all sorts of ideas about what we want to do with this stuff like uh, this is a toy example. It was an example that you know Jake, myself, and our colleague Josh here in the front row did as part of a company hackathon in a few days. Um, it was the easiest thing. We were all familiar with to talking with cloud provider APIs all the time, um, and it was the almost obvious thing we could come up with. But like, well, we're trying to think about well, what could you connect? I'd, I'd really love to build a Postgres connector that allowed me to talk to Postgres databases and get. Um, link Spiffy IDs to Postgres identities. Um, you know, I'm excited by authorization as well. Like, what could you do if you knew the identity and like process the query uh, such that certain identities were allowed to access certain tables or to perform certain operations within the database? Um, yeah, you can imagine a world where things accept Spiffy everywhere. Like, why should I need a GCP key in the first place? Like, why can't I just talk Spiffy? Um, spiffy straight to, to GCP or straight to any cloud provider or even any API. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's it. That's what we wanted to talk about. Um, thanks very much for listening and for staying around this late. I'm conscious it's, it's been a tiring week for me and Jake, and it's been a tiring week for many of you, I'm sure. So thanks for coming at the very end to listen to us plug Spiffy for a little bit. Um, just before we go on and hopefully have some questions, um, if, you, if you want to chat to us, you, you can, those are our work emails. We're also on, uh, on, on Twitter. Um, you, can, you can find us uh, or chat to us at the end. Um, we'd also like to say a quick thanks to our colleague Josh, who's got the camera in the front row. Uh, Josh not only worked with us on the initial, um, our, our colleague Sitaram is waving at me from the back. Um, <laughs> thanks, Sitaram. Uh, Josh not only worked with us on that uh, the hackathon project where this came from, but has also been important in building Cert Manager and Cert Manager CSI Spiffy, which is um, the kind of the, the fundamental infrastructure that we see as being an important step in making Spiffy workload identity really work on, on in Kubernetes environments. Um, so yeah, I promised there would be code. Uh, there's a link. The first link is um, the Spiffy connector that we presented as the example application and things is all in there. You know, I, I, I don't think it's production ready, but you might find it interesting to look at it. Um, you can also go and check out the CSI driver Spiffy uh, in the, and, and the Cert Manager uh, GitHub generally. I'll just go and read a bit more about, about Spiffy. Yeah. yeah, come come talk to us. Like we really want to drive a world where Spiffy is used. And the pragmatic way of doing that is to build more support into other things. So we'd love to collaborate with you and just yeah, come chat to us. We're 
we're on the Kubernetes Slack in Cert Manager cha dev channels, but we're also on the Spiffy Slack, which is probably a better place for it. Just, yeah, come chat to us. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I don't know. We weren't told, we weren't given any instructions about questions, but I don't know if people have any questions. We have a um, microphone here. Oh, there's a microphone. Okay. <laughs> um, might be good to try and let's try the try the microphone. Yeah. Right. Uh, thank you very much for the talk. It's very inspiring. Um, I would like to ask because maybe I, I I lost that part. How does the server? which actually may run per cluster, one per cluster, so to say, acquires these credentials from the cloud provider itself. I understood that the connector connects to the server, but I'm missing the bit where the server ground gets the credentials from the... Yeah, so the server, in our toy example, the server has a long-lived AWS credential, which is a bit of a fraud because we just said, don't do that. <laughs> but you can connect it with your, like, we move, we're moving it to a single point, and you would, in, in probably in production, it would be like Vault or something. OK, so, so basically, you would use something that the cloud provider provides. So if, for example, cloud provider could use X509 directly, that would be the best for you, because you don't even need to connect directly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you can kind of do it with uh, OIDC Federation already, so maybe you would do that as well. All right, thank you. Any other questions? You have to pass the, pass the microphone across. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, you, you mentioned integration <coughs> Sorry, with uh, cloud providers. So in that case, uh, wouldn't it be the way that when I look at, for example, audit logs on my uh, S3 bucket or whatever I'm accessing, that I would only see the identity of that Spiffy server, and also that server like needing access to everything that every workload needs access to? Or is there a way to kind of separate that out to be able to use those identities outside of the Spiffy world? Yeah, you, you would see just the Spiffy server doing those. Well, you would, you would see the, the short-lived credential that was issued by the Spiffy server, I suppose, uh, which you, could, you would have an audit log showing you that the Spiffy connector server had issued you a credential, had issued a credential, and then the credential was used in that way. But um, yeah, like it's, it's, it's not ideal, but it's, it's meant to just be an example, really, uh, use case, yeah. So you, you would have to like piece it together from both logs and then figure out what was happening. Yeah, I mean, we said already our ideal situation is that the cloud provider just speaks Spiffy, and so we wouldn't have this. But we also, no one's going to use Spiffy if you can't use it right now. So we're trying to drive up adoption and then get people to notice and then start implementing native support. OK, have you looked at, like, uh, for example, in, in uh, Microsoft Azure AD, you can actually uh, use certificates for um, authentication uh, of, of um, applications. Uh, so is, have you looked at a way of maybe integrating that to automatically generate uh, those identities and then putting the certificates in there? So I actually haven't looked, but it's while we've been looking at the ecosystem in general, well, while most things say that you can authenticate with mutual TLS, they'll be doing some parsing of the common name, basically just for identity, which is not the same as what a, a SVID looks like. So even if things claim that they speak MTLS, it doesn't really, it doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be able to abstract, uh, take an identity out of the SVID. But we'll look at Microsoft because we want to support more things, and this was just a, a short demo. Okay, thanks. It's not something we're familiar with, uh, as familiar with. Any other questions before we finish up? Cool. Well, you can always chat to us. Yeah, we're, we're available on various Slacks and our company page, jetstack.io. <laughs> OK. Thanks. Thanks very much. <laughs>